we have seen that the exponential functions on to if we exclude the origin. But we have also seen that the exponential function is many to one. How many to one exactly? And you know that you can always make a function one to by restricting its domain. But how far do we need the to restrict the domain of the exponential function? So how can we make the exponential function one to one? Well, we want to know this, of course, because we would like later on to have the inverse of the exponential function, the logarithm. And for inverses, you need one to one. But we, before we start on that, we will need to solve our one to one problem first, which is what we will do in this video. So take our function f from c to z, where we exclude the origin, so the on two part is fine f of z equals e to the power z, uh, where we define e to the power z as e to the power x times e to the power i of i, where we apply the other formula over there. So we know f of z is 2, 1, and on to. Okay, how many uh, uh, points z are mapped to the same point in the range? So if you have z1 and z2, uh, how many of them are mapped to the same e to the power z? So suppose we take two different values, z1 and z2. I want to know when is it true that they are mapped to the same point e to the power z1. So we have z1 equals a1 plus b1 times i, z2 equals e a2 plus b2 times i. That'd be different. Th they are mapped to e to the power z1, e to the power z2. And when are those images the same? When are the image values the same? So we have e to the power z1 according to our definition, e to the power a1 times Euler formula, cos b1 plus i times c uh, sine b1, and e to the power z2 uh, yields e to the power a2 times cos b2 plus i times sine b2. So the norm of e to the power z1 equals e to the power a1, and the norm of uh, e to the power z2 equals e to the power a2, the argument of e to the power z1 equals b1 and the argument of e to the power b2 z2 equals b2. Well, we want those uh, function values to be the same. We want to map that z1 and z2 are mapped to the same point. That means that in this uh, codomain, the e to the power z1 and e to the power z2 have to be the same. That means that if two complex numbers are the same, in particular, that means that their norms have to be the same. So if e to the power z1 equals e to the power z2, then the norm of e to the power z1 has to be equal to the norm of e to the power z2. Well, the norm of e to the power z1 equals e to the power a1, norm of e to the power z2 equals e to the power a2. So we have e to the power a1 equals e to the power a2, and that's only true if a1 equals a2, because then we are back in real analysis. So you see that the real part of the z1 and the real part of uh, z2 have to be the same if you want to map them to the same point. What about b1 and b2? What about the imaginary parts of b1 and b2? Well, we want e to the power z1 equals e to the power z2, so that means that the uh, real part over here, because e to the power a1 and e to the power a2 are already the same, so cosine b1 has to be equal to cosine b2, and the imaginary part sine b1 has to be equal to sine b2. Back in real analysis, solve cosine b1 equals cosine b2, b1 equals b2 plus a multiple of 2 pi, or b2 equals minus b1 plus a multiple of 2 pi. Then we want to satisfy our second equation. This one doesn't hold for the sine, but we are still left with this. Uh, this one still holds for the sine. So we know b2 equals b1 plus a multiple of 2 pi. So we have seen the real parts of z1 and z2 have to be the same, but the imaginary parts may differ a factor of 2 pi. So z2 equals z1 plus k times 2 pi i. So how many points are mapped to the same point? Well, if you take, for example, the point 0, that's mapped to 1. But also, if you add 2 pi i to that, that's mapped also to 1. And if you So 2 pi i is also mapped to 1. And if you add, again, 2 pi i, also map to the same point. Or if you add minus 2 pi i, all those points with which, which distance 2 pi i are 
all map to the same point in the uh, image plane. So how many points are mapped to the same point? Well, infinitely many. So uh, f of z is many to one, well, even infinitely many to one. So how do we uh, make f of z one to one? Well, what should we do? We should restrict the domain. And we see that you want to prevent that you have two points in the domain which are distance of two pi i uh, apart from each other because then they are mapped to the same part. Real part doesn't matter, but you want to uh, prevent that points lying two pi i apart are, are inside the domain. And how do you do that? Taking the maximal domain possible, of course. Well, you take a strip of width exactly two pi i because if you take a strip of width to pi i and no points are in the strip which are two pi i uh, apart from each other. You can of course only include then one of the boundaries. So you can take any strip where you like at any height but the convention is to take the strip uh, between minus pi and pi where the upper boundary is included. And if you restrict the domain like this of your f of z then uh, your function becomes 1, 2, we knew already it was 2, 1, so our function becomes 1, 2, 1, our function is 2, 1, 2. So now uh, we are, uh, you know uh, how uh, we can uh, start to invert our function.